This video was developed in order that you may understand we're no longer just working within the norm. Never before in my lifetime have I ever seen 15.1 million people unemployed, all with PhDs, master degrees, and skills that are just phenomenal and beyond measure. But we all are finding ourselves making a shifting in our mindset, in our thought process, and so in order for our families to manage and to do even better, because I only work within wealth building systems, you must have a mindset change. And your mindset should be focused upon wealth, building wealth, and recession proofing God bless you, my your family. family. I greet you with divine love. I'm Dr. John Butler. I'm Dr. John Butler. I want to first of all, say thank you so much for tuning in and sharing with me as I attempt to deliver a message of uh, hope, uh, a message of comfort, and a message of understanding where we are now so that men, particularly family men, can move forward. These last three years have been years that are in my life I have never ever seen before. Uh, life has been fair to me, and in some cases, favor has just been overflowing. In the last three years, with the economy, with the global effect financially, so many things have shifted uh, to the point until many of our wives have had to take the helm and make sure that things were still taken care of. And, and in many cases, we as men fell out of place. I stopped because I know that as a family man, I myself, I've been married now 30 years I've been in a relationship with my wife. We've been married 25 years in January of uh, 2011. Recorded for five years prior to. Um, and for the most part, I was able to hold up the helm on everything. You know, you traveled the country, you did this, you did that. And so our lifestyle has been incredible, to say the least. But at one point, things begin to shift mainly because the industry in which I'm in, music industry, uh, as everybody well know, that industry is totally in an uproar now. We're still trying to figure out what it is, how will it operate, what's next for it, uh, how do we actually gain traction in an industry that had so much corruption, but even the corruption now is confused. <laughs> uh, so I had to shift. I had to make a paradigm shift, per se, because it felt as though uh, things would not hold out too much longer. So you sit with a, an engineering degree and you, you realize that you're only going to get to a certain level there. You, you continue to shift in with, your, with, the, with ministry. I've been in ministry 25 years, but there's some things that the industry of ministry uh, partake in that I don't agree with. And so because of that, uh, I do ministry, but not as a pastor per se. Uh, so then I move a little further because I've always been a businessman. But the difference between me and most people is that I can't really work for anyone. Why? Because I'm already one who would get up earlier than most people wake up and I go to bed later than most people go to sleep. But those times that I'm awake and I'm always building, I'm always creating, and I'm always active. So I continue to pursue and make my dreams come true. And, and, and as far as dreams coming through, I've always been one to go for, the, to shoot for the highest uh, star, to reach for the, the furthest star, to reach for the highest heights. That's, that's just been me, my entrepreneur spirit. Uh, my entrepreneur spirit has just been that way. That's been embedded in me. Uh, I don't know if it's from forefathers or whomever it is, but I've always been one who get up and go get it, a go-getter. And then things shift, and then all of a sudden you find yourself saying, what must I do now? Well, I'm in a new phase. And the phase that I'm in is incredible. A new chapter of my life. I've been working on a book for the last three years entitled From Tragedy to Triumph. And now I'm seeing that that book is about to come to fruition. I was waiting on one more chapter. One more piece to the puzzle, and finally, it's here. I stopped to encourage you, and uh, 
tell you not to give up, don't lose heart, don't faint, because the race isn't given to the swift nor to the strong, but unto him who endure it until the end. And those of you who love being in your rightful place, God's going to make a way. But there's other opportunities that may come your way. Don't sit and hope that the next one is going to be greater. Because you might miss out on the greatest opportunity in your life. I, for one, am very skeptical about who I deal with, who I work with, how I operate. But everything is in that whole fashion. I'm very skeptical because I've been able to succeed without confusion. So I stop to encourage you and tell you to hold on, hang on in there, and know that help is on the way. I know what time it is now. It's 15.1 million that are unemployed. So that makes it harder for those of us who have the scholastical activity, accomplishments, um, academician ability that you've been able, you've, you've been able to sustain, and then all of a sudden it seems like the whole bottom falls out. So I had to change how I live, what I do, in order to keep that standard of living at a decent level so that my family won't have to worry about a thing. I don't, I don't know about you. I, I don't know how your family structure is, but I know when it comes down to the point that my wife has to take care of certain finances, our conversations are not clean. They're not good. They're not pure. As a matter of fact, they're cut short because she's always looking to me. And if I fall short, now the conversation has a lot of confusion in it because pretty much the idea is that uh, you should take care of that. The man, the bills, the wife, the home, the children just obedient to all of their surroundings as they grow and mature into adulthood. So we've all been misplaced in one way or another. But I thank God for his grace. I thank God for his mercy. And you know I thank God for his love because without it, I would not have made it. I would have fainted had I not seen the goodness of the Lord. But I thank him for how he has restored us. And I continue to make you well known of what's happening in my life, how God is moving us back to where we were and even above and beyond what we could even imagine. So you need to call me sometime and just ask me, Doc, well, what you doing? And for those of you who are afraid of change and are afraid of shifting, you got to come out of that comfort zone because I'm going to tell you it's going to be an uncomfortable place. I would have always wanted to sing for the rest of my life in front of people and make the living that I've made in the past, but things have shifted. And I had to accept that shifting. I had to accept the fact that it just was not going to be that way. But I also had to accept the fact that God had not forsaken me. Neither have he left me. So I move forward and I'm matriculating to the higher levels, the higher planes, in a whole different fashion. But now it really makes sense. Because God was saying all along, John, I never intended for you to work for wages. I've always intended for you to work for your fortune. So that whenever a man is hungry, you can feed him and not starve yourself. You, you didn't get that one. So when a man is naked, a woman is naked, you don't have to worry about clothing them, and then you go naked. When somebody is homeless, you don't have to worry about putting a roof over their head, and yet you're not having one over your head. In order to do that, you need fortune. You can't do it with your regular Nine to five, you can't do it with your regular paycheck that is always short. So maybe you have to shift in your mindset, in your thinking, and say, you know what? I might have to give this a well-deserved and received shot. I might have to go out and, and change my mindset in order to help others and then get my family where they probably should have been all alone. It's been 30 years for me and my family. And, and my wife, and, and I am so 
happy. I'm pleased with where God is now, the direction he's taking us. And so whenever people come into my presence and they, they declare to curse my blessing, all I do is laugh. I say, you, you got to be out of your mind that I have found the preeminent way of making fortune. I have found a way that is so solid until sometimes it's unbelievable. But then when people tell me things about, well, it's too good to be true, I say, well, think about these last three to five years. They've been too bad to be true. But they have been too bad to be true. But they was true. They were true. Right about it. So if it looks like it's too good to be true, some things are. This isn't. This is right on time with Deuteronomy, where it declares that your blessings will overtake you. Wouldn't it be a good feeling to wake up one morning and all of a sudden your blessings just overtake you? Because I know you've had moments when it felt like curses were, were just coming in in, in, in in rapid forms and they were coming in in large mounds of just Look like every time you put your hands on something, it failed or it did not happen right. Something, it, wouldn't it be nice to wake up one morning and then all of a sudden the blessings are just overflowing and overtaking you? Well, that's the purpose of life. That's the life that I'm living now that I'm beginning to wake up every morning and new mercies I see because God is just that good. So I, 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 Encourage you to go ahead on, keep on going through what we're going through, but look to move into other boundaries. Look to move into other zones. Look to move into higher heights where you can actually secure your family and their family and their family and the family after and the family after five, six, seven, eight generations down. And not have to do it in a fashion where you have to look over your shoulder. It's a great way to live, that you can go and do, be, and have, and don't have to look over your shoulder and wonder if somebody coming after you. God bless you, God keep you. May heaven continue to smile upon you. This was just a message to the men, to the family men, those husbands and fathers who are trying to find your place back into prominence, into that, that, that status of prestige. God has not forgotten you. And you ought not think that he has. But grab a hold because there are opportunities out here that are being afforded us right now. You better grab on. You better catch on. Because there's 15.1 million out there right now and the number is growing every day who's saying, I don't have an opportunity to present it. I don't know how I'm going to come out of this. I don't know how we're going to recover from that. But God has sent an opportunity your way. Don't let it slip through your fingers. And don't let the enemy, who really don't want you to prosper at all, tell you anything about what you're about to do. Make the move. Make the call. This may not be the only opportunity, but at least I can present to you one opportunity that can possibly change your life. God bless you. God keep you. I speak to you from the depths of my heart because I understand what we're going through. Been there, done that, but guess what? I ain't going back. So I look forward to hearing from you. God bless you, God keep you. May heaven continue to smile upon you. This will always be my prayer. This is Dr. John Butler saying, keep your head up. Look out there and know that whatever you want is possible. Because all things are possible if we only believe. God bless.